Okay, welcome everybody to the 13th Kesh Health Teaching Workshop. And this workshop will be um, concerning the interaction between the eye and the thalamus. And Dr. Elia Kostova will give us a um, um, description of the eye in a medical way and take us on a visual tour of the eye as we see what makes that up. And that will be followed by uh, a discussion with Mr. Kesh of the Kesh Foundation at the Spaceship Institute on how the eye um, interacts with the feeling part of the brain and the thalamus. Okay, um, let's go through now to the Spaceship Institute and speak with Dr. Elia Kostova. Are you there, Elia? Are we ready to go? Yeah, hello, everybody. Can you hear us? Yes, yes, very well, very well. Okay. Hello, it's me, Elia. It's nice to be with you and the third workshop of the health regarding the eye and connection the eye with uh, thalamus. We start with the first slide. Okay, thank you. The first slide is uh, a picture what already you know. This is the picture of embryology of nervous system and uh, how you see the retina, which is the seat of the eye, generate on the point where is the point of thalamus. This is the point of D encephalon. And when you see on the chapter of the left side, where is the area of D encephalon, thalamus, related with function of the optic and auditory neurons. So actually the thalamus is the main regulation system of our eyes. Uh, in the previous workshop I mentioned to you that eyes and ol olfactory bulb, they are a uh, direct extension of our brain to environment. Actually, with them, we accept the fields directly from environment and transfer to our brain. The difference between the eyes and olfactory bulbs and other receptor organ that they are so similar like structure and uh, uh, organization of the fields and cells inside of them so similar like our brain. Other sensor organs, they are more individual and uh, have priority in them function. Our eyes and olfactory bulb, they are directly connected with our brain and the function of eyes is so similar to the function of our brain. They make one uh, common composition. Okay, then we go to the next slide. Okay, thank you. With that slide, I want to show you that the eyes is direct extension of our brain. And actually, the nervous opticus, you see like a white tube connecting between the brain and eye, generate from thalamus, the main nucleus from where start in innervation of our eyes is thalamus. And the how you saw in the previous slide, the seat of our eyes, retina, is from thalamus. 
then the structure grow from inner side to outer side and organize different parts of our sensor organ eye. Okay, we go to the next slide. Thank you. On that, uh, on that slide is visible for you how goes the regulation of uh, nervous system from our brain to our eye. Actually, we receive two, uh, two um, how is it in English? Um, flow of light from different point of view to our eye. They are triggering different part of our retina and the signal from a retina goes through chiasma opticus. This is the crossroad of optic nerve and actually the, red, uh, the right eye gives the signal to the left part of our brain through left thalamus and the uh, left eye transcend the signal from evolvement through thalamus to the right part, uh, right part of our brain. The cross section of the signal is chiasma opticus. That is the place where above that place it is the place of our pituitary gland. Actually, the chiasma opticus have directly connection, like a field connection between the pituitary gland, eyes, and thalamus, and they make tri triangle. 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 What is more? What is important in the structure of our brain? So. Just remember that the left, right, uh, the left eye gives the signal to the right side of our brain, and the right eye gives the signal to the left side of our brain. This is the main part. But actually, we have additional parts, and they are directly to the similar part of the brain. On the right <coughs> picture, you see with green color from the left eye, you. A left eye transform additional part with the signal to the similar part of the thalamus and the similar part of our brain, what is the left end of the red line in the right eye. We have again an additional part of signals to the same part of our brain. And actually, it is that is happened because these two eyes, what we have, supposed to be one, but actually we have two because the information from environment is a lot and the nature separates our eyes to two to be able to accept huge amount of information and to send to the brain and the brain transcript that information what eyes accept from our environment. They are actually like accept, uh, receptors for fields from environment and transcend the information like a field to our brain. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So that slide give, give you, gives you information where eyes, where is the place of our eye. In Latin name we call that orbital fossa. This is like a hole in, in our skull, in front of our skull. This is the front part of our skull. And regarding the 
the plasma technology, if you remember, that part of our skull belongs to emotional part of the brain. And actually, if you see how the eye is like a bow, situated in one hull, and to not be in touch directly with bone, we have first fat tissue. And that fat tissue makes sure that the bone will be safe inside. Actually, the whole of bone make some kind of core. Inside of that core, you have fat tissue, what give you, um, how is it in English, to be protected the ball, eye, and is inside of the fat capsule, you have your eye. And the structure of the eye is so soft, and because of that, need to be protected from bones, from fat, to not be in touch directly with bone. On the upper side, you see, is like a small clothes organized in structure. This is our lacrimal gland. And through the lacrimal ducts, that gland have a function to make a moist around the eyes. And on that sense, it is again protective system of our analyzator to not become a dry. And also, you know that the water is a conductor, so through the water, our eye is most, more easy to accept the fields from environment. And because of that, our eyes, they are all the time uh, moist, they are not dry. And if they become a dry, this starts to have a difficulty in vision and accepting the fields from environment. Okay, around the eyes, which they supposed to move, we move our eyes. Actually, is nearly of the um, on the half of the sphere, like parameter, and. That is because we have several muscles where they are supporting the movement of our eye. And the, and the muscles, they are connected with bulb of the eye on the top and on the bottom area and left and right. They are the uh, straight muscles and also we have the muscles will connect the different corners of the eyes and we call that like a diagonal muscles. All these muscles organize with them a retraction and extension, different movement of our eye. And actually, it's interesting why we need to move our eye. We need to move our eye just to accept different kind of fields. In that movement, we or organize the acceptance of the fields. That is the muscles which is around the eye. Also, we have a muscles inside of the eye. And they organize the how much to be wide or narrow our iris. This is whole. And through that hole, our eye accept directly light inside. Okay. Next slide, please. Thank you. With that slide, I want to show you uh, what is the position of our eye if you look on, on top. So actually, our, like, it, our eye is just lying in that hole. So optic nerve comes from the brain, connected with the specific 
place of our eye. It is like a pole. And if you accept our papilla and iris, iris and papilla in the middle like a south pole, so that part of the eyes will be our north pole. So from south pole we accept the fields inside and from the north pole we release the fields through the optic nerve to thalamus. And how much is wide or narrow our papil, that much of light we accept in our eyes. So the contraction of the papil just organize the different fields which we are able to accept from environment. Actually, we differentiate with our eyes, with, with our eyes, which one field we need to accept. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So how you see our eyes have a shape of bulb and uh, how I told you we have the South Pole and the North Pole is the same shape like a planet Earth. Have also the equator in the middle. From the beginning you have a hole, our South Pole papil. Then we have a iris. Inside of the iris, this is the inner muscles which regulate the diameter of papil. And in Latin language we call ciliary, ciliary muscles. And then you see the, it is uh, all the bulb is covered of one layer of uh, vessels and nerves and we call choroid layer of eye. This is actually inner layer of our eye. Outer layer is sclera. It's made from connective tissue. On the right side, you see that we have actually a space between the iris in front of the iris, we have a shielding from cornea. This is like a window. So cornea just cover the whole our papil. And then after papil and ciliary muscles, we have again small space and come the lens. Lens is organ who transcript the fields and transcend them to the to the next part of our eyes which is actually liquid inside of our eyes so the fields just slow down the spe speed to all the system and finally reach our retina and trigger the different cells in our retina our retina contain different kind of cells regarding which one color they consist inside. It means each cell regarding the color what have inside accept different strength of fields. And then these cells organize the nerve impulse and transcend to the thalamus and other part of our brain. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. That is the cross section of I. This is the same structure. 
and uh, how you see in the middle we have a hole have layering of the wall three layers on the center blue is our lens and above the lens is covering from cornea in the middle we have a tunnel and actually the inner space of our eyes is separated to two parts left and right so from that slide I think for everyone is visible that our eyes have exactly the shape of planet Earth and also of the shape of reactor. What Mr. Cash and after that Armen built it. So you have a South Pole is our papil, North Pole it's the point from where start the nervous opticus and in the Latin language we call macula, that point. Okay, next slide please. Thank you. That is different point of view of layering of our eyes. So how you see, we have three layers of the wall of our eyes. And the reactor also have three layers. The outer layer it's white, the middle is red, and the inner is like yellow for you here. So the right picture, it's again give you layering of the wall. Okay, in front of you is the South Pole, our papil, and the North Pole is from where start nervous opticus. And actually the muscles out, outside of bulb, they just positioning. They make a position of eye, dynamic position, it's not static. Okay, next slide, please. This is how I poison myself. This is how they notice my This is how they notice my Thank you. So, it's again slide where you are able to see the layering and actually the outer layer how you see this is white color and the main structure is connective tissue and actually is full of CO2 so the first layer of our eyes is CO2 in the plasmatic gun state inner inner part is choroidal part what is the um, contain vessels in nerve and that is actually transition matter please Rick show the picture of the reactor of Mr. Cash of different kind of matters If you are able to do now, yeah. 
Yeah. So we have transitional matter between the outer layer and inner layer. The transitional matter here contain the blood, lymph, and liquid state between the cells. Inner layer is retina, and actually that is the nervous system of our eyes, autonomic nervous system of our eyes, and is actually copper oxide. So inner layer of our eyes is copper oxide. And copper oxide this is the main nerve transmitter in plasma state. And when we accept the fields through light from South Pole, our pupil, and slow down the speed through lens and liquid state inside of eye, with autotonic nervous system, copper oxide retina, we transform the fields and transcend them to macula. Macula is point from where I start nervous opticus. And, act, and act, actually macula, what we call macula, this is the point which accept the result of the transcribed, transcribed fields and transcend to the thalamus. This is somehow is triggering the uvula on the same way. Okay, so we have transitional matter, our inner layer in the eye containing the vessels and, and nerves. Principal matter is inside of the whole of eye. When we accept the light and the light starts to make a, a trace the road during the liquid state of the eye in the in the middle in in the middle of the bulb of our eye starts to organize the principal matter and then that principal matter organize new conditions and transcend to through the macula nervous opticus to the lungs So it's important just to know that copper oxide it's everywhere where we supposed to accept and to resent the fields like nervous system, like nervous impulse. We have uh, in the muscles also copper oxide because through the movement of muscles, we resent information to our brain. And actually the eyes, they are direct extension of our brain, but they help to our brain to accept the movement of a warmth, movement of the fields, the movement is not only when some part is moving. The movement is when different fields, they change their strength. It is also the movement. So they accept the difference and transcend the difference to thalamus. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So that slide and the pictures, it is so similar to the pictures of inner earth. And I know most of you, you are familiar with that. And it's again, I just want to show how it's the layering of the wall inside everything what is for you 
willow and the red is uh, in the right side of the picture is some kind of purple is the liquid inside and the center is macula just it's written macula that point is like our ovula is in the nervous impulse which is transforming from copper oxide and uh, retina cells this is like acceptor point that macula accept all the fields and transcend through nervous opticus and again you see you have papil our south pole and the north pole is in the place of macula and in the middle we have a hole okay next slide please Thank you. Next slide, I want to show you how the eye is completely the same shape of a reactor of Armen. You have an optic nerve from your south pole, then the reactor eye, and on the right side, your papilla. This is your south pole. This is the same shape of reactor of Armen. Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. That slide, it's again to be visible for you that the eye have the shape of reactor, the same structure. So the brain just have <coughs> two receptor reactor to be able to accept the field from outer and to transform to inner part. And also, the, our eye there plays on the skull where the emotional part of the brain what is mean they accept the fields and also they uh, emit the fields so they um, generate in them the fields they transcend the fields from thalamus to evolvement but also they generate inside the fields Okay, next slide, please. Thank you. So, this is the cross section of I and the reactor of Armen. You see. The reactor of Armen in the middle have somehow how you call this in, in the reactor pin is it central pin. This is actually the macula of eye. So the central pin, the central code just accept information and transcend. Okay. The next slide, please. Thank you. So, if you remember when we speak about the star formation, star formation in chest connected with the star form with the main core reactor our brain 
the same we have in the that small reactor our eye we have the left and right part this is like the shape of our lung the same like shape of our lung and then in the middle you have macula which generating and transcending the impulse this is autochtonic nervous system of retina in the same way our heart have autochtonic nervous system so here we have repetitive model and it's again connected with the nervous channel to the thalamus this is nervous opticus so in our eye we have again repetitive model of star formation <coughs> okay Next slide, please. Thank you. So, these three pictures give you information again how it's uh, the place of macula, how eyes come through papilla, transcend to lens and liquid inside of the hole of eye, and reach all the retina, and the signal of retina just go through macula, through the nervous opticus. On the right side, you see one bright red hollow. This is the place of macula. And actually, this is the, um, the point where all the fields come to one point. This is like acceptance point. Accept the fields all in one. This is the same with reactor of Armen. Okay. So, how you see our eye is this so complicated model, but repetitive model of star formation in one hand, and itself is this a, a reactor for plasmatic fields, which is able to transcend and to emit the fields and generate the fields itself. Okay, that is for my side. If someone has a question, if not, I will give microphone to Mr. Cash for next explanations. Uh, thank you, Elia. That was amazing. Another uh, tour through the body. Um, I have a question about the eye. Um, yes. I, am, I once uh, hurt the. Um, um, I hurt my eye. I had a piece of uh, a small piece of metal embedded in. They had to remove it, and when they removed it, the doctor said that. Well, she used a little sort of knife scoop thing and actually scooped out the the substance of the uh, cornea of my eye, scraped it right out and said that that would heal over within a, a day or so, basically. That the, the cornea or, or the covering of the eye is able, that clear substance is able to actually heal itself. And I thought that was quite amazing. Can you uh, say something about that? Yeah, in the same way you make as you took it to clean the environment. It's the same thing because the cornea is your two layer. That's the. That's like the uh, fatty layer that forms on the uh, on the water when when the <laughs> gans is created and so on. You mean? Yeah, the carbon is uh, 
the main conductor, the carbon, have a, a function to accept and to hold. So, if some layer contains the CO2, it's because of carbon, accept the fields, and because of oxygen, just hold it. You understand? Uh, yeah, thank you. That's an interesting way to look at it. Yeah. If you don't have other questions, I will give the microphone of Mr. Cash. No, there's okay. lots of questions. If you could okay, hold on. Okay, I'm waiting. Elliot, could you just hold on? There is lots of questions. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Vince. Just made it back in time. I was listening on the live stream. Um, okay, so let's just go back. What does it mean when the optic nerve is de degenerating? Is it falling apart or is the carbon structure changed to diamond? Mm, Mr. Cash said that he will be answered. I know the answer, but he wants to answer to you. So Okay, okay there's other questions. Diamond! Well. In transport to diamond. So, actually, to have a, a transmission of the nervous impulse, you need you 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 need to have the superconductor tissue, and when the superconductor transforms to diamond, just the signal stops, and that's it. You have to uh, rechange the structure again to superconductor. Okay. So the generation of the optic nerve is because is because the tissue change the fields from graphene, graphite to diamond. Actually, you just uh, start to add more carbons inside. And the organization like in space of the organization like in space of the structure goes to diamond, more stable. So when the structure is more more stable, if no dynamic state, so it puts it's uh, not able to go through. Sorry, we just get a lot of noise in the microphone there, Elia. Uh, can you readjust? Okay. Yeah, okay. Thank you. Um, okay. Thank you. And uh, okay, there's a there's two more questions here. And what is the meaning of the optic nerve cross section? or crossing section, sorry, and why does the left eye send information to the right part of the brain and vice versa? Can you repeat, please? Okay, it says, uh, what is the meaning of the optic nerve crossing section? So I do believe that was back up at slide... Uh, you mean um, he has my opticals, they cross to each other. He has yeah, my opticals, yeah. okay. And so? why does the left eye send information to the right part of the brain and vice versa? Because you're supposed to have one eye and this is Trinity. You split to be able to accept more information. And because the brain is supposed to organize and to transcribe the information like one, that's why you have the main path to the other part of your brain and the second way to the same part. So why and would that they give you the full data of why, all the brain? But why would why do they cross? That seems strange to me. Why wouldn't they go directly into each side of the brain? It's a shorter shorter route they, you would they think. Are, they are not cross if you uh, stick two part of the eyes and two part of the brain in the middle. It is not cross, but when you want to split something, you make a cross section so they go to two parts. So it, that's the definition of uh, stereo sound um, to and split. And Mr. Cash said that we will give you more precise after me explanation of that. That is my understanding. He will give you one more. Okay. Uh, one more question. And that is, why do people have different eye colors? Why? Can yeah. you repeat? Why do people have different eye colors? Because they accept different kind of fields. They need to accept different kind of fields. You are uh, generator itself like a body. 
your vacuum system and you need for you different kind of fuels to contain your system. What kind of fuels you need, that kind of color you have of your eyes because you attract that kind of fuels in it. Great answer. Thank you. Yeah, that's very interesting. It yeah. gets the mind going. Yeah, it does, doesn't it, Rick? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I can think of a lot of other questions to follow up on that, but I'm sure that they'll be answered <laughs> with Mr. Cash. So yeah. um, I think there's one other question I've just seen here, and that's how come some people have slit-formed pupils instead of round ones, and does that make a difference beside the look? The difference between the shape of the eye. The shapes of the pupils. Of, of the pupils. Yeah, because it is uh, it's made different strength of field which they pass the eye. They are more white or they are more thin. It's, and they trigger the different part of retina. How much the white is um, the shape of light which come in eye that much more uh, retina cells trigger. And when they just make the thin flow inside, so less cells that light trigger. Do you understand? I, right, okay, I so that... I think, think the question was more about the shape of the iris rather than it opening and closing. So uh, the pupil would be... Is that true that some pupils are actually slits rather than a circle? Cat's eyes? I think of cat's eyes. Oh, I see. Some animals might be that way. That yeah. might be possible. Uh, just because uh, in retina, different kind of cells, they contain different color. But they are not random on retina. They are on lines. So you have the cells a red line, green line, uh, black line, do you understand? So when you have different kind of window, more narrow or more uh, wide, you accept that, that much flow of the light inside of the room. It's the same with eyes. Mm -hmm. you, if you have narrow window or narrow papil, you accept the shape of the light and that shape of the light trigger specific cells in your retina and other cells it, they are not able to uh, get dynamic state. Do you understand? So just part of the cells in the retina accept the light and others no. Right. Okay? okay. Others they are Thank in you. shadow. Oh yeah. Uh, one more question, it looks like. Um, oh, two more questions. If you focus on an infinite point in the sky, after a few moments you find you have an inner peace and can see thousands of sparklings. Okay, how yes. can this be explained? Because you organize the light itself. Inside your eye, through the yeah. fluid. Yes. Yes, okay. Uh, some people have a disease called photosensibility. Yes. So they have to live in almost zero light environment. Is, mm -hmm. there a root, is there a root cause of that disease? Yeah, they don't want to see the reality. That's the main <laughs> cause. Yeah, emotional disease. Yeah. Mr. Cash confirmed. Okay. Yeah, it makes complete sense, right? If, uh, if you don't mm -hmm. want to do something, and even if you can't think of it yourself or consciously say that to yourself, uh, the body will adhere to that, uh, that emotional uh, request. Everything is filled. Just more of them, they are more solid and visible for us. So, but everything is filled. You're photosensitive. That means you don't want to see the reality. Whatever, solid or no solid. It's so simple. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Can I Catch give the microphone to Mr. Cash? Yeah, that was the last question, Alia. Thank you very much for those yeah, answers. Okay, thank, thank, thank you, you guys. Well, yeah. I give to Mr. Cash. Thank you. Thank 
you very much, Dr. Elia. Uh, you got to understand that more and more we let Dr. Elia to take over the teaching on the health side. And I try to sit back and learn more than teach. The knowledge is vast and she carries most of the knowledge. It's just, as I always said, it's like a beautiful flower, you have, you have a rose, but till you trim it, till it shows the beauty. So she's coming up and in time she will be the only teacher in this, on this table with the health section. She has understood the concept and she can explain it in a much easier way. A couple of questions you raised is the fact that, for example, why people don't want to see. As you know, we have had a case, sometimes going to Belgium, where the girl became blind on a flight from South America. And um, the people of the Keshe Foundation in Belgium know her. And she attended one of the presentations. And I asked her to attend the second meeting with us, because I said to her, I can give you a sight back. She was shocked, she was already blind for about two years or so. And I asked her to come in a dark room and the system we have, I placed behind her head, just by hand, and she said she can see. But I said, it's your decision, do you want your sight back? And she's a student graduate school in the university, she must have graduated by now from the university. She said, no, I don't want my sight back. To me and the people in the, in the room was in a way a shock afterwards that why somebody who's given a gift of sight does not want to see. It was a lot of soul searching. And then, when you understand that I is part of the emotional part of the brain and it's actually created at the same time, it's the only part of the body of the man which is created at the same time as the brain. The emotional part of the brain. It gave me a very clear indication. She was looking for attention. In having sight, she will not get that attention which was missing from her father and mother. And by going blind, she was getting the attention from public. And that was enough, that was what she was reach, reaching for. So, people, we think the I is just a point where we receive information. But in fact, through I, we explain our emotions. We send more information out than we receive. It's very much the same process as the ears. Ears transfer the fields from the physical part of the brain, and partially the emotion, but the eye does the reverse, transfers the fields of the emotion, and not through the physicality. And this is very important. Through eyes, we love, we give love, we care love. We don't do that through our ears. When we love something, when we love, we adore a person, we look at them in the eye, we look at them, we look at them and we enjoy seeing them. And with looking, we send the information back that how we feel. And it's for the receiver to understand what has been sent. So, the eyes are the inner look into the soul of the man. If you look at the operation of the eye, now that Dr. Alia has opened it up, is a copy of your Gans reactors. Now maybe you understand why from the beginning we left and we aimed for CO2 and copper oxide. The liquid inside is the same water as you have. Some of you have been washing your salt with your copper oxide and you the CO2 from the salt. But some who haven't, have reached a different result. In the eye, there is a slight kind of salt, which allows the transfer of 
any kind of energy at the level which is absorbent by the muscle tissue, copper oxide, to be absorbed. This is the limitation of the man into the sight of the universe. What does this mean? This means, you have the copper, as part of the neurosystem of the muscles and the neurosystem of the body, and then you have the water. The water in the eye is exactly what we explained before, even yesterday. Is in the Gans state connection line. And now, the tissues of the eye, the copper oxide of the eye, is in the Gans state. And then, you have the CO2 state in the background. This is why your, your CO2 is white in color, it's the same color as your eye. The same color near enough of the brain, because it's emotionally connected. Connection of the information, through emotion, is much faster than the connection of the information through physical part. So, it's so important that the information sent out is so rapid and so instantaneous, that the body itself has chosen part of itself structure which is the CO2. There are those who have only the white eye. They don't have nothing else. The eye is totally white. These people can see. The knowledge is with us. We have tested one of the richest families in Saudi Arabia, about five years ago. People who listen to this program, they carry the system to Emirates, to be handed over. And within weeks, the girl could see, at the age of 13, never seen anything. She could see black, and red and green. But again, she decided she does not want to see, because it was too horrible to see. And, as we see in the same position, emotion was more important to get care, that could, she could see and then she wouldn't get attention. We do not understand the full structure, and we refuse to handle our own emotion. Then it leads to different kind of blindness. Blindness is not by the sight, blindness is by the emotion, rejection of the reality. So, eyes are not physicality to see, but in the channel to be part of our emotion, how we connect to our souls and how we connect to the other beings around us. If you go back to the origin of the humanity, when the man or a first fish started, eye is part of your skin. It's been stretched so much over millions of years, that it's become transparent. It's not a separate organ, it's literally part of your outer skin. But, over millions of years, billions of years, the DNA and RNA have collaborated for RNA to receive this information, by DNA allowing transparency through one single tissue. It's very much nano-layer, single atom. But stacked in a way that all the holes through the nano-layer are exactly in the same position. That's why you allow the light to, co to cross through. That's why it looks transparent. This is, if you look at the nano-layers, space gap. There are positions which you can put space gaps in a condition, by creating certain fields internally, that the holes open up. This is the future of nanotechnology filtering. This we have put in patterns and we teach in a later date. But, when you bring the holes in the right position, you allow the fields of the given strength to cross through, and then you call it the light and the vision. The structure of the copper oxide inside, is to do with the connection of the humanity with this neurosystem, with the tissues. Because the reflection of the nerve, is not by true neurosystem, it's through plasmatic magnetic fields. Why we have this copper, is due to the fact that, our muscle tissues, where the nerve finishes, 
operate only through copper in the muscle tissue. When you have a neuro damage, or you have a muscle damage, where repair is not possible through neuro damage, you use the copper within the tissue, and you establish the line of communication, and then the nerve repairs itself. The reason we have copper in muscle tissues and in the eye, is because when, for example, you are at the edge of a cliff, you just run and come to the edge of a cliff, by the time you send information to go to the emotional part that I'm going to fall, for the brain to give instruction to physicality to reverse, there is a shortcut communication line, a plasmatic, direct, instantaneous communication to the tissues of the leg or the arm, that does not need to go through the neural system. And because they are made of the same material, the communication is instantaneous, and you pull yourself physically back. If that information, or there is a certain neuro damages which is too late, that's the time when you fall off the cliff. In so many ways, people who jump across bridges, jump across rivers, jump across high, um, what do you call it, mountains and cliffs, they have trained their body to fool the information not to go to the legs. By the time it arrives, it's too late, the action has already taken place. And that's what I always say, only 20% of the information goes through the neural system, 80% is through gra plasmatic gravity, through magnetic field of entities. And because the layers inside the body are made of cancer state of matter. If you understood, the structure of the eye, the way is set up. Now you can build telescopes to see the deepest part of the universe. You decide the gap in between the nano layers. This is how in the future, we look ahead of the distance we travel, even we travel thousands of times speed of light. The realigning of nano layers in the structure of the copper oxide gives us that availability of no electronic system detection and vision. These are the future space technology which has to be developed in the coming months and years as we go into space. We can't stop and open the door and look for the outside because we go too fast. Nano layers on the structure of the copper oxide is one of the easiest ways in the Gans state to create a non dimensional vision detection. It's one of the easiest ways. If you can create nano fabrics which are still in the nano layers, you will have invisible vision where you detect without being detected because you're still in the nano layer. These are part of the teachings of the body comes in the future for communication. And, if you understood this, and in what we said all the time in the past, we give you, by controlling the nano gates, parameters and the strength, allow you, <laughs> or you're allowed to look into the distance and to the environment which you are not used to, and you see the future. Or you see the entities which you've never seen before. It's very much like a peeping hole. You open a little gap, you see a little more. And as they open the full gap, you see the, through the peeping hole. Now, the peeping hole gap opening is that we understand the gas properties of the material, is dictated by the gap. And as the gap is magnetic field controlled, as a plasma, now you decide what plasma you want to allow it to go through. Now, for the first time, maybe those who were wondering that, like the telephone calls, they'll, they'll receive food through the phone, then we said that our phone. How we are going to show the presence of his, a person or entity, which you have not seen before. We create the plasmatic condition, which creates the magnetic field gap, which allows you to see what you could not see. So, Mr. Katz? This is the eye. Yes? 
Um, I, th I think we, this came up a while ago in the plasma group meeting where uh, we were talking about having glasses that have GANs on them and looking through that. Um, so that is actually a reality and just being able to control the gap in between the GANs will give us that uh, the, the gravitational field forces that we're looking for as in looking for, uh, for sight. In a way, in a way yes. But the, the, the opportunity which you have now is by choosing different materials, gases, you dictate the size of the gap. And you dictate the strength of the gap and you dictate the strength of the rays which you allow to go through it. When I said a few weeks ago, we'll make presents to soul of, bless his name, Christ, people thought it was a joke. Now you understand how. Do not forget, there is something very important. Those who have not understood the principle of Christianity, never understood or denied the truth. Amongst human race, there is a daughter of Christ, which was, she came to south of France. And that blood is running in Western Europe. and we know how to access it. And through DNA and RNA, the confirmation will be there. It not as Christ left nothing behind, he left a girl, which at 12, 13, was brought to south of France. And that blood has generated. It's the same with the Blessed Muhammad. His children and grandchildren live amongst Iranians as part of the blood of Iran. So it's not very hard to be able to achieve and reach the soul of these. This is the reality of the new knowledge. Then no man needs to be killed just because they draw the picture of a prophet. It was his wish, because he understood why his image was misused or shall be misused, and he did not allow the misuse, bless his name. Now, you have the vision to see, and as you carry the eye of your father and grandfather and the color of the skin of your forefathers, your RNA carries all the information the same. Now we manage to open it at the length which it is, using the same knowledge and technology, now, you should be able to see, in the coming times, the time of the past. And if you remember, I kept on telling you a long time ago, we play the action of the man to the man to be ashamed of what they've done. Now, slowly you understand more. The way man has managed to open RNA, through the same technology of gapping, we open the magnetic field strength of the RNA, and not DNA. And that is a huge, huge information bank. We all see, because our forefathers have forefathers been present, because they've seen it with their own eyes, what happened, and who was just, and who was not, and exactly what happened. This is what, will shake and bring a lot of people to the end of their jobs. Sorry, I was just uh, thinking about that and of also it's with okay. the, the patents. I mean, <laughs> this is a lot, I know this is a huge subject and uh, it's probably going to bring out a lot, so... Um, no, there is, this is why... <laughs> this is why we put these things out, we start teaching this way. I said to you a few months ago, we dismantle what is totally wrong, brick by brick. I and don't the think it's a matter brick. of dismantling, it's a matter of building. Yes, no, no, let me, let me explain. As you know, on the 16th of June this year, we went to Vatican and we handed over our wish and our demand for World Peace Treaty. And as you know, we do not call Him Holiness. The Pope yesterday has resigned, claiming that there is no God. 
he does not believe in God. Because in him believing in God, he had to accept what has been done wrong. And Mr. Keshe, yes. that, that article was from The Onion, which is a satirical um, Doesn't uh, matter, mag there's magazines. a recording. No, no, there is a recording, and the things will come up, because it has started. It could be based on fact, for sure. The process, the process of dismantling has started, because now we can show the truth through man RNA recordings. Don't forget where we are, we are in Italy. And there is a reason we are here. They got to understand, people were waiting for aliens to show movies. But in fact, the RNA carries the, the, the whole information of the history of man. Now, slowly, through the eyes, through this process, we allow it to open up. RNA research will become more important than DNA research. With better tools. Better tools. You are part of it, you are building that tool. So this the brings me to the point, sorry, um, about when you were talking about the alignment and the gaps. When in the patent you were talking about aligning the different plasma fields to make a, a projection screen, let's call it, wherever you are, um, that actually is a reality because that's the way our eyes work. You see, somebody asked questions why the two half of the greens are on one side and two half of the reds are on the other side. and why they connect to one side of the brain and not straight to the other side. This is all to do in what we perceive to be correct and what we want to accept or react to. Most of you which have built reactors as two halves will have this dilemma, but the problem with your reactors is that the half, two halves sits right in the middle if you build a single top or two half cores and you join them together, and you even nano coated it or non nano coated it, the gap between the two sides creates different current flow. And you find out one of the reasons you cannot get your reactor moving continuously is because of this plan. Where in the eye, the crack goes from pole to pole, yours is at the equator. This is, this is the difference, this is the time. You have loaded your reactor with CO2 and then with copper oxide. And then, here, in the center, Arm and the Mark are working and talking in loading of the three layers. We will see the first visionable systems, where the CH3 will force the CO2 in the middle, and copper oxide will sit outside with the water. We create a different dimension, and the visions will be different. This is why I kept on saying, pray for your reactors. And why, like Armand and Marco, you carry the CO2 key in your pocket. You connect it to your skin tissue, to your eyes, to your soul, that's why they carry it. If we explain it, then they don't understand. Maybe they understand why they carry it and how they control it. And through their emotion, they interact with the reactor, which is millions of kilometers away. This is how we tell somebody else we love them, or we let other people know how we don't want to have anything with them. This is how a father feels a child on the other side of the boat, it needs his call, because he's short of something. And when people understand this, then we understand how easily we can replicate and answer back, and let other people know what we feel and what we know. 
The hardest thing is to communicate through voice. It's the slowest method. If you can communicate through eyes and emotion, it's instantaneously, it's received. It's just a receiver who has to understand what is received and what's got to be analyzed. And as we go into space, we have to learn this technology. Understand it and read it. But the eye is the path to the emotional part and through it to the soul of the man and through it to the connection with other entities in the universe. But we are too afraid to accept the truth because physically at least we don't need to see what we, can, we cannot believe in. In a way, physicality or vision has become a best source of man hiding from the truth. Any question? We can go home now. Um, wait a minute. <laughs> no, not after that last statement. Um, no. <laughs> uh, could you, you have to explain a little more about that last statement you just made, that um, which makes sense on, on many levels. Uh, um, those who are into spiritual teachings and so on, um, you know, the ideas that we, the the things we see are basically an illusion of one sort or another, due to our interpretation through the brain and so on and our limited understanding. Um, you mentioned earlier about not being able, uh, people not being able to open up to the full. I think Elia mentioned uh, not being able to open up to the full reality of the situation. Therefore, we shut down in certain ways. No, let me let me explain to you something. What I see as a green is not necessarily green to you. As the same color green as I see. What is blue sky to me is not the same color blue as you see. If we make, now that we can make accurately thousands and tens of thousands of different color of blues using carbon, you say, do you give a chart to someone and say, show me the blue you see, and give it to, the, to your son and say, give him, show me the blue you see. No way he ever puts his finger on the same dot as you did. In so many ways, color vision loss comes through the structure of the blood of the man. Those people who get color blind, and then become, they, they become visually impaired, is through what they do not want to see, which they allow, the actual parathyroid gland allows to grow in the, in the blood, that then in transfer, eliminates and becomes non-transparent to the eye. So you don't see it. You decide what you want to see, and the color you want to see. Okay, and uh, a lot of times that seems to depend on the, let's say, the intensity of our intention, or, or attention, our at that time. There's a lot to do with our emotions. For example, when one is really scared, uh, you have a, a lion chasing you, your eyes will be wide open, taking in as much of the environment as possible. Would that be an, an, a correct analogy that, that way? Is, uh, is a physicality to do with the fear of loss of life, which is the emotion you haven't got chance to re replicate. Um, the, it's very much like how um, the fear through sight can cause physicality to, to what do you call it, misfunction. But that's the reverse. A lot of time we don't want to see what is in front of us, because it suits us that we can carry on at least to live, not to terminate. And it's the same with emotion. So, so let me just carry on for a second. Uh, so many people, or I guess most humans, would tend to create internal pictures um, to substitute for what they're seeing in the environment directly. 
uh, and, and that can actually interfere with vision. If, for example, if people are driving and they're daydreaming, they're not seeing what's in front of them, they're looking at their internal pictures. Um, can you talk about that a little bit, perhaps? It's just, that's a physicality. How we see emotions affecting the which You look at the eye as a physical, um, what do you call it, window into the world of physicality. To me, it doesn't work that way. And this is one of the things which causes a lot of problem between me and a lot of people. They think you don't see through, through their behavior. But you see, but what can you do? You want to go and batter everyone, what you see and how who they are, and what they are. So, you got to teach yourself to see the, through the soul, through the eye. Ignoring it does not mean you don't see it. It's just that's the way it has to be, otherwise you disturb too much. A lot of, a lot of people who are very close to a lot of people, see the problem, see the fault. But, if you try to change every fault, then you don't have any time to do anything else. But you see the soul. And when I see people, I don't hardly see their physicality. Because to me, it's the essence, the way they look. The way they look at you, they give their sincerity, if they are what they are, and how the soul behaves. And how you look, and the way you put the line of the sight in respect to that and the soul, it shows your position in your life and in, your, in, in the realm of um, existence. Look at the way Japanese bend, and they still look up with the eye. They don't bend all the way and put their eyes down. They're still looking up, if the guy is going to do anything to them. Because when you bend, your line of sight and your soul becomes the same in one line, it's like the base reactor. And the one who stays higher, dictates. Bending in front of somebody is the habit of the weak. And this is what we do. Is now you understand. Look at one of the pictures Dr. Elio put on with two eyes and the thalamus, the same one platform. When you bend, when you bow, the one who stands higher in front of you, which is thalamus stands higher, he becomes the head reactor. So he dictates. You are submissive by your own order. You find successful people always stand up and they don't bend, because the thalamus dictates the position. Because the eyesight keeps the setting. Behavior of a man is psychological through what he sees through his eyes, but he hides it in the back of his, uh, what he call it, thalamus and his soul. The behavior is the same. You don't need to use words to say to someone you love them. You look at them and through your eyes you transfer the information and the, and the feeling. It's for them to receive it and understand what is being given. And the ones who are take by habit, they receive, but they do not take, give back, but they do not know, in receiving it, they already have lost more, because they had to do something with it. Sight has nothing to do with physicality, but the man is again physical. You receive information on the heavy side, because you are in the matter level, so you go to the copper and you go lower. You send the information through the lighter, because it's information easier to transfer through the CO2 layer, the white layer of your eye. So, in fact, when you look at someone, what you receive very little through one-tenth of area of the whole eye, your nine-tenth of your eye is actually sending information out. It's like a radar dish, I send it out and see what it gets back. But, man has become so physical that he only looks at the pupil. You want to understand the character of the man, how generous he is and how he thinks, or a woman, or what you're going to expect in your relationship with a woman or a man, look at the white of the eye, because that's what comes to you. This is what you're going to receive. The 
I pop off the little hole, it shows how much she is prepared to accept and to receive from you. That's why when you get surprised, the, the, the hole opens up. Because it wants to receive more, it cannot believe it can receive so much. That's why when we see children and we cuddle them, we, we, our eyes opens up, because they give freely. So we want to take as much as possible. I is a source of energy we receive. It's direct energy, it's as much as you eat food, you receive energy, it's energy comes to you in your eye, changes, gives it to the, uh, the muscles and it goes to your brain. It's the feeding line to your body, to your soul. You want to know somebody loves you, look at the white of their eye when they tell you they love you, and you know if it's true or not. I've done that all the time. It's very easy to give love, with your eyes, and see how the eye closes or opens up. It shows the lack of trust in them, in respect to what they receive. Because they know they, are, they don't deserve it, or they don't understand it. It's like when you go away, we went to Belgium, Belgium was so, why Belgium? Why have we brought this technology to Belgium? Because they knew the nature of the country. It's the same with us, with human beings. If you do not, you want to know the truth about the man, look him into the eye. If he shivers, it means he's a thief. If he stands and looks back with you with a kind level, it means you found your match. You can trust 100%. I do this all the time. I meet people, in an instant I know what I have in my hand, and I've done that for years and years. You see through the soul of them, and you don't need to look in any other way. You tell a woman you love her in the eye, and you see if she's truthful or not in responding back. And you say the same thing to somebody who you love, and you call it whatever, and you find out how they respond back to you, you know where you stand in your marriage. But it's for them to understand you, you are not a fool but you accept the condition. Because what you do, you transfer the energy somewhere else. If you cut the head of the man, man as a soul can live on his own through his eyes. This is why originally we had the eyes connected to, uh, to our emotional part of the brain. Because that was a source of feed. That was a source we opened up, and we allowed the energy into the water of the eye, converted back to be able to feed the energy which the eye needed. And if you look at the structure of eye, there is no difference between the eye, the water in the lung, and the juice in your stomach. It's the conversion system. And why do you need to convert? Because you need to absorb the energy from it. The lung, is the energy for the physical part. The stomach is the energy absorber for the physical part of the body. The lung is the physical absorber energy for the physical part of the brain. And the eye is the energy absorber for the soul of the man, in essence of his living. And that's how we became, that's why the minute the body is created, the two eyes come out, the retinas. It looks for energy, easy conversion. And this is exactly what man has not understood. And if you can support the soul, through the eye, then you find a behavior which is correct, and life lasts a long time. So maybe this answers a lot of people, and puts a lot of fear on the people who understand it in the time to come. But at the same time, the body, the brain, the emotional part, likes to give the information back in what I've received, but what's my answer. So he uses the white. Then you understand what you got on your hand. You employ a person, look them in the eye and look at the white and tell them you, you want to employ them. And then you see the reaction in the white of their eyes. 
then you know you've got an honest worker or not. You love a woman, you tell her in her face, you love her and you adore her and see what she responds back to you. You know you've got a cheat on your hand or you've got somebody who can be part of your life. This will not change. As I said, the heart is between physicality and emotionality and after three years it falls out. The eye never tells a lie because it's part of your emotional part and it stands always constant. It has no physicality change. The water in it stays constant, the, the coating of the copper oxide stays constant, the CO2 stays constant. There is no factor of change as such. Any other question? Uh, yeah, we have the question from last week from Eric about the uh, when a person swims under the water in a heavily chlorinated pool for a long time. I said that's physicality. That's you. You exactly what? That's what happened to Eric with the metal in his eye. But this time it happens to you through liquid. Hello, are we still there? Yeah, yeah no, I thought I yeah. thought you were going to elaborate a little bit on that today. That's what I thought no, you said. it's just well, that the way, it's a chemical interaction. It's just an irritation, basically, is what yeah. you're saying. It's not a, nothing yeah. spiritual or... or uh, yeah. You see, if you, when you ask that question, you should have heard the noise in the background. We have our American guy here. He's, <laughs> he's arrived, he's a flag bearer for transfer of technology to American military. You all know him. Uh, we let him to speak that you know who he is. And he is one of the four frontiers for the peace through the American military and government. In so many ways as they say themselves. We'll see what comes out. I give the headphone to him. You can introduce yourself. Need to speak up there, Brett. Can you hear me, Vince? Not too well. We need a little more volume there, closer to the microphone, perhaps. I think you need to reset that mic. Yeah. All right. Well, first, I want to thank uh, Keshin and the Knowledge Seekers here for being hospitable and really welcoming and inviting me in. And I'm here to meet up with some people that are supposed to be coming very soon to help uh, transfer some of this technology and have it used in a peaceful way for the future of this planet and of humanity. And um, it's really a joy to be here and be around with them. We went out last night, had some uh, food and walked around town and just talked for a long time. And I got a sense of the people and um, it was enjoyable and I loved it. It's nice to be here. And I have a question for Mr. Kesh about the eyes, though. What if someone loses their eyes? What happens to the connection with the soul then? Can you hear me? Sorry, it takes me out. Headphones which have to be moved around. This is something that we can talk on our behalf. Um, when you lose your eye, or you are born without the eye, part of the inner circle of the thalamus takes position and takes that part. Blindness is not the physicality of the eye. And in so many ways, the information, which is emotional, is much stronger and it reaches the inner part, the thalamus itself, to transfer the, the information. You don't need... You find people who lose an eye, they become much more emotionally stable. Because now they have maybe one eye to see with, and then it cannot be lied to, is what they see. But when you don't have eyes, you're born without the eyes, thalamus directly receives the information. Any other question? 
Um, I'm still intrigued by this idea that the eyes, sorry, the, that the eyes basically interfere with this um, um, sensitivity that you, you were just speaking of with the, the thalamus and so on. So how, how could this be? They are made of it. They are made of the same. Just go back to the pictures which Dr. Elliot showed you. Mm -hmm immediately comes, they don't interfere. If you cut the, the, the tail of it, which is the, what do you call it, the eye, the body still receives the information. But it seems like the body receives the information better almost without the eyes. Like you were just mentioning, if, so many blind people are, are more sensitive emotionally and more sensitive to... Um, yeah, because, uh, because what you do, you bring other senses to carry the information. The, the ears, the more or less, the, you got to realize, I explained to you in a very simple way, the shape of the core of the eye, the socket you call it. The socket is placed and positioned in the way to receive information. You don't see a bone. Somebody you bend I don't have an eye, you don't see it with just a bone. The only thing is the skin the, the which covers that bone takes the job of receiving the information. You just change the nano layer. If you can scrape the whole eye, the whole thing out and even the no no tissue on the bone you'll find out you don't have a man, you don't, there's no way of transfer of energy so easily. And then you go using the skin, the skin and the, the ears, and also some emotion to add up. Because still the information will not be the same. Just what I explained a few minutes ago. Man did not need, and I've said this before, did not need the physicality. Physicality is the leech on top of an entity, what we call the, this, the emotional part. And that emotional part has already had its own energy source, which is the eye. Just because it's not there, we never thought of it, we never had the knowledge to have an insight to do. Very easy. I repeat it again. The structure of the stomach, the structure of the lung, the structure of the eye. All carry three liquids. And the liquids are for transfer of information or energy as an information. You do not need, and that's what I've said before, we do not need to take the body, the body of the man into a space to create the man. If you can take the eye of the man and his physicality is an embryo, you have the man. It's just where you want him to grow. And then the physicality will adapt to the nature of where he lands. Us, we use the eyes to nourish you, to send information and energy to the emotional part. Different creatures in the universe use exactly the same system, the same no, the same process, but in different ways. Um, Mr. Kesh, do you think one day the, the technology that you speak of will be able to regrow a new eye? Or Why substitute not? in some other way, perhaps, that will still connect with the soul? Why not? <laughs> Okay, well, that's a good we have answer. Regrown, we have regrown a more complicated piece, which is a toe. Four years ago, five years ago. If you put the right system into it, the information sits in your RNA. It rebuilds itself in through DNA. You can regrow any part of the body, and now the knowledge goes further and further. Uh, I don't know, as I explained to you yesterday, or I haven't, I explained to you now, that the Cash Foundation has gone into full uh, operation in bringing its health uh, technical know-how 
and the, what I call the systems into operation worldwide uh, usage. And uh, till about two o'clock this morning, Dr. Elia and I were doing the first step for the first things to be manufactured, to be dispatched in the next two to four weeks. We haven't just opened the CO2 now, the health section, and very soon, hopefully in January, the first systems for fibromyalgia can be put off the shelf. Everything is on the move. Keshe Foundation has got into a full production collaboration with the Chinese. We've seen the success and the demand for CO2. We tried to reach at least 1 million a month at the beginning, and further on to 10 million a month worldwide, through collaboration with the Keshe Foundations around the world. You will see the changes which is coming. Now, we don't talk. We Now that they, we have opened the doors, we go full way. Yeah. So, building a machine that when you are blind to see is, is inevitability of what is to come in the coming months. So, I just... Would... Uh, would you want to just show a little part of that video that I made yesterday, Rick? With the is your system is still flying? <laughs> I did a short video yesterday. <clears throat> I reloaded. Did it fly? Did um, it fly? I don't know. These little reactors, they were bouncing around, so I, I think there was uh -huh. something. You need the bearings on them to stable them. Armin is looking at me, bearings, he hates that word. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. As you know, we we have gone further to landing position by two centimeter this morning since yesterday. So we are down by about eight to ten centimeter. What is this we are looking at? Can somebody explain? Are you talking about my reactor? This the this is the. We have it up on live stream there now, uh, Vince. It shows uh, his reactor rotating at 2500 RPM, filled with aluminum GANs and so on. You want to talk about it there, Vince? Yeah, sure. I just uh, I made a total of uh, six reactors, and I emptied that yellow one that I had before and uh, added uh, some more. Yeah. What was that, Mr. Cash? No, Marco was worried about his new reactor being a little bit wobbly. When I look at yours on the top, I say congratulations. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> well, so I emptied the yellow one and um, I, I added the, some more AL GANs and I also added CH3. And I mixed it all together and I put it into the bottom five reactors in a kind of starship formation. And um, so I just started rotating right. the other one with the AL GANs on top. And you can see that it does create that band. But there's some interesting effects that happen in the camera due to the rotation. Um, I just thought it was really interesting and I thought I should get it out. But the other part is, is that the tube in the center of the reactor there is the tube there there is no there is no um, uh, air in this in this reactor and yet this tube is still there so it's still I'm still trying to show a confirmation that it's not just a mix of GANs that does it um, there's only three mill, milliliters of GANs in here and it still creates the tube so if you can see there's a a definite different type of uh, formation on that on that ball there. First, you can you can see the distortion due to the camera somehow the the timing on the camera frames or something I guess they Vince that it gives a strange um, distorted view of the uh, reactor when it's going around. It's quite interesting actually, a spiraling kind of effect. Exactly, because it's not that's not visible. It's right. It's uh, it's only in the camera. Um, uh, it doesn't answer us. Have you flown yet? No, I haven't flown yet. Are you moving? Are you moving? Not yet. 
You're not vibrating? Oh yes, it's vibrating. The motors or the system? The systems below this reactor vibrate quite bad. So it's, uh, yeah, see if you can. Maybe due to the uh, drill press vibrating yeah, yes, or whatever. Yes. Yeah, but, but why, why, why your gases are settled at the bottom? Because they're no, not rotating. Oh, you said the reactor's gone four of them, you won't go. <laughs> Yes, exactly. exactly. I took it out um, to shake it up and uh, to get the GANs to... Exactly. So I do put it back there and you can see they're all just one little uh, glued together. So they're really easy to take apart. This is more for testing to see if the GANs will make the band for when I do the other prototype and um, just the reaction. Uh, of balls at speed so um, there's more of a test I just wanted to make sure that I had seen some interesting things and I wanted to show it you can see how the GAN settles out between this shot and if I go back a few minutes well actually that's before you uh, you can see it, yeah. then it's shaken up, and then it settles out yeah, again. See, it settles down. Look the way it settles. Ah, yeah, oh. but it's fine yet. Yeah, yeah. Oh, these are his reactors. When do we expect to see you flying, Vince? Our uh, plan is still for lunch at Christmas. <laughs> Moon or Jupiter? Uh, you pick. <laughs> this Mars is very popular this month. Uh, they just sent a rocket off. Uh, uh, Vince was uh, tuning into the launch uh, just before the show today. It actually so, got off the launch pad without blowing up, too. This time, that's that's good news. <laughs> this is this is what is what what actually if somebody can go through the live stream for past seventy two hours and take a picture sh um, shots. Of I already shots uh, I started doing that. To that's show right. the we movement of the system coming that's down. That's right. A we time are hoping lapse. that we land. Yeah, we are hoping that we land by Tuesday, maybe. <laughs> Uh, we, we, are, we are we are very slow. They go to the moon. We are only taking us five days to land on Earth from 30 centimeter. But at least we are landed without any fuel. You got to. I was explaining this about in our system, which is out of the what do you call it? Our discussion of medical part. But um, if you look, uh, our system is using a lot of energy, a lot of plasmatic magnetic fields to pull itself down to the ground, but it's got a lot which are pulling it up. So it's using more and more energy as it gets closer to the, to the, to the ground. Because these are elastic pulls, as you pull them further, you need more energy to pull. So uh, the first five centimeter, if they use, let's say, thousand joules, the last one centimeter most probably uses 10, 15, 20,000 plus, maybe 40,000 joules to make that one centimeter. Is, is an exponential increase in the energy needed to do down at the centimeter. So we, we wait very anxiously to see if you're going to land. But is it really an exponential increase in energy or is it just trying to position it? It doesn't matter what the energy is. It's uh, exponential energy, but it's, it's locked into the Earth gravitational magnet again. Um, Elia was in the lab the other day and she said, why don't you put the aluminium core underneath to bring it down, to attract it, to balance it. It has not made much difference, but uh, in a way, because of it, we don't see the lift shakes. Maybe we don't see it because it's there, but um, so everything is under consideration. If you look, the Y has changed for the first time after nearly a week. It's gone to 20,000. It was very stable. Yeah, I was just going to so, mention that. That's right. 
this, this shows that the system has started interacting in the right direction with the field. Because it's an outbound coming in. Which one? No, 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 it's just that the breath is here. We will, we'll, we'll, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put the American military guys in front of our truth box. See how truth, how truthful they are in wanting our technology for peace. And then we will tell you the outcome. <laughs> My system does not lie, and the American colonel cannot be so indirectly. No, 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 no. We, we have American military guys here. Uh, at the highest ranks they could bring. Uh, so we put him on the, in front of the machine and we ask him well, how truthfully they want to use our technology for peace. And if it is correct, and uh, what I see is correct, we call the Iranian uh, officials in, because it has to be clean cut. We will see. So, what's the next question? Maybe we have to look into the eye of the colonel and see what is how he gives information back. Maybe, you know. It's a very auspicious health workshop at this point, it seems. <laughs> it is, but the thing is that things are coming together. Huh? Absolutely. The whole thing. There are people in the background who are doing a lot of work to bring the technology in the right way out. And um, we'll, we'll explain more and more in the coming weeks and months how the Keshe Foundation in 2015 will not be what you've seen or even in the next three weeks, four weeks. Changes are coming so rapidly. If you can move uh, 11 kilograms by pulling it down and holding it in a constant position of descent for four days without burning a single atom, this is a miracle. Unfortunately, I don't know. His name is Luciana, isn't it? Lucian? Lucian. Russian? Yeah, I get his name right this time. I had him backbiting behind me yesterday. <laughs> I get the name wrong. So, so if you tell him if he can go to CNN and tell them we are descending, they can watch it. We have a little mouse in the back. What does he about to say? Oh, these are retinal cells which you see on the on the. Uh, on the big, on the screen. Uh, Elia, why don't you explain? Yeah. Okay, you can speak in my head. You think women are hard? You haven't seen this one. She's a tough. Uh, no, extremely tough cookie. Um, Oh yeah, you laugh. We got to live with her every day. There, there's a saying. There's a saying, an old saying, that it takes a diamond to cut a diamond. So I think that's why you're delivered, Elia. <laughs> Actually, diamond doesn't cut a diamond. Copper cuts a diamond. You that's true. You mentioned that. You mentioned you, that in a previous workshop, uh, and I thought that was amazing. I wanted to look that up. Actually, no, that was interesting. Because, uh, it, it, in one of my old suits, I used to be, a, I, as a hobby, I used to be a diamond dealer in large sizes, 2 carat, 10 carats. And most of the cut diamond, you don't cut a diamond with a diamond. You, to bring the beauty of a diamond out, you polish a diamond with a diamond dust. And we already have a diamond, she just needs a bit of dust to be polished and then it'll be shining. I know Elia doesn't like it, but that's what it is. Right, it there's always a bit of uh, heat and friction generated by the grinding process, eh? Ah, and there is no heat there. <laughs> <laughs> if you work with diamonds, there is no heat. You know, if you push oh, a right. diamond through a, if you push a diamond through a certain current barrier, it becomes a con conductor for, I think, six microseconds. Uh, this is one of the properties that uh, when you put a current through a diamond, uh, the energy in the lattice structure for a, it goes to a point to flip over to graphite, but it goes back on again about six microseconds. We've done this test with the, uh, a doctor from the beer, diamond, diamond people in South Africa, in Belgium about four or five years ago. At that time they were trying to assess the structure of the nano coating as a diamond structure. And they have a very, very thin diamond flawless, deep uh, deep flawless. 
and then we put it under pressure and it actually conducts and they can, they want to use it for switching in their high speed trains, levitation trains. Does it become so a superconductor in that instant? Instant, yeah. Very, okay. very short. I, there was, I was, I, it's a I, pattern. You can, the guy has made a patent of it. And it's the well, there's an interesting it. physics article that just came out a couple of days ago about copper oxide being a room temperature superconductor when a laser is, um, a laser light is uh, played, played on it in a certain way. This is the first time, apparently, they've, they've been able to make a room temperature superconductor and it uses copper oxide um, layers along with some barium I believe it was as a as one of the uh, doping factors. Well it goes from the superconductor to super resistor. Well it's a superconductor but the, here's the catch is only for like a picosecond one whatever a billionth uh, more this than a billionth is exactly of a second. This exactly how your eyes work. This is exactly how your eyes work. Because you saturate the energy gravitational magnetic field in the gap uh, of between copper and ox uh, oxygen and the next cell, and you get, the gap fills up very quickly because the layers are not that thick. We we have looked at this in, oh, five years ago. If you want to understand how it is, if you made one of those um, copper-coated uh, wires, solid wires, not the thin wires, just rub your hand on it and you see how it changes and becomes shiny like a diamond. And then, if you try to work it, you will see this is very... It becomes literally see-through diamond if you rub it hard enough a few times. It loses its uh, matte structure to a very shiny structure. And at that point, in certain point, the, the energy between the layers are released and that superconductivity is the con what's called the pressure on the layers to come together. We saw this one with um, Ivan, when he was pushing the nano layers together. And this is how your eyes work. You, it receives an impulse of um, light or photon immediately according to the strength it releases to the to the um, copper oxide layer it decides what color what shape and everything else according to the interest it received that's how we recognize colors and objects and the shape was, uh, it the okay sure we could. there was what is there any other question I think that's probably well, uh, good for today. Yeah, just a quick question. Uh, you said on the last workshop you might bring the Cups of Life to show today, have you? No, I forgot. Okay. We, we've been, you see, we've been very busy just before we come on the air. We had a birthday party lunch. So, <laughs> that was a technical problem. <laughs> no, we should. <laughs> the thing is, you know, we have a lady who looks after us here in the in the park in the house. So today, yesterday was her birthday. So she 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 what do you call it? Made all sorts of things for us to celebrate her birthday. Uh, she's uh, an asset to us because she looks after everything to do with the foundation, everything in the background. Uh, strange enough, she's from Ukraine. Yeah. Uh, beautiful lady. Uh, she's uh, she's there for all of us. Uh, yes. Is there any other announcements or things we should um, no, talk we don't about have before an announcement. we wind up? No, but um, now you know how we are and what we do. But uh, in the, Monday is a national holiday in Italy. We still carry on, hopefully, with the Chinese program if, if we do. And uh, after next week, we all break up more or less. Arman is flying back to report back to, uh, what do you call it? To America. He has to go and see to his life. <laughs> He's sick. He's so badly sick. And Marco is sick too. And uh, Elia is sniffing. We all, we all got... Oh, uh, Brad hasn't got it yet. We give it back to the American. 
reaction. It's a chain reaction. By the time he goes back to America, he'll carry it for the rest of the military. We'll see if he goes oh. catch. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe when they are sick, they will ah, good. <laughs> secret weapon, eh? Secret. <laughs> I've okay. never seen Armin, I've never seen Armin so innocent, he's so sick. <laughs> well, that's another factor that's interesting, we can talk about it another time, and similar to when you lose your eyes, you become more sensitive to certain things. Uh, when you get sick, <laughs> you actually become more aware and awake in certain ways, too. I think he's got a comment to make. Do you want a comment? Maybe Armin is here, he has to say uh, no, we don't give him the microphone. We don't catch cold then. No, thank you. Everybody oh, will catch cold. The whole world. That's <laughs> probably what's happening. It's the microphone <laughs> is the culprit among all this. Um, anyway. You have one question, Mr. Kesh, on the delivery of the CO2 kits. Uh, have they all gone out? Uh, we have. We had a problem. Uh, a large number were given to UPS. They came back. And they are sent out again. And I think about 60 or 70 left uh, to go out next week. We complete our order from here. And after that, after second week of December or third week of December, Cash Foundation delivery of the CO2 unit starts from China. So Cash Foundation, uh, Italy, in delivering the initial units is completed, will be completed. Whatever order comes through till that time, we should be able to meet. But I spoke with the guys in um, in China this morning. Uh, it's a totally new kit, new version, and then uh, we're waiting for the Italians to produce theirs. But we are more or less, by next uh, Friday, we should be able to complete and close the delivery from Italy altogether. There are about tw maybe 20 which went to the Delivery yesterday, but it came back for a stupid reason again here in Italy, but we try again on Monday, it's a bank holiday. Uh, but, uh, what do you call it? it sh we should be completely done by next Friday. Uh, whatever comes in, and after next Friday, it gets transferred to the delivery of the people in China. So for now, we'll <laughs> just tell, tell folks, um, to Anybody hang, who has hang, in, to hang in there for a couple of weeks, and if no, they still don't if receive it? No, 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 no. It's all gone out. It takes up... We had to change the, what do you call it, delivery. Well, what do you call it, company, in a way. The whole thing had to be re, redone. The boxes mm -hmm. came back, it had to be readdressed and reposted. If you received a UPS number for delivery, and you haven't received it, send an email back to us. It means the goods are still with UPS. If you have not received the UPS number and your order goes, I think, till the 22nd, 23rd of uh, uh, November, goods are all out by now. So whatever is left from 23rd of November, which, uh, whatever it is to go, then it'll be completed by next Friday. Because we shut down next Friday and all the operation goes down to to China. Okay, People can yeah. still work, right? Oh yeah, we don't stop. We we don't announce anything till next week. Um, I was speaking to the guys in China today, this morning. They are doing a new video to explain the process. They are doing their own promotion. Everything else is done. It's a um, it's totally new um, structure. Is is. Um, it's totally different, but we have to wait till they are ready. They, are, they do their tests in the next few days, and then we have a. Then we we announce it and see where we go. There are huge changes in what do you call it in the design. Totally, you will not recognize it from the original one, but the original one had to be put out to show that we can deliver the system and what the system can do. The new ones are um, very much. Um, ready for the CO2 to be used for different applications afterwards. Most of you, some of you have already spoken to the, to the guys who are manufacturing it in China, so you know who you are talking about, and they were here last week, you spoke with them. Yes, that was an interesting conversation. Yeah. Um, Mr. The Kessler, first batch, let, me, if, let me explain to you, the first batch next week is starting is 100,000 units. 
then you know about this, the system is going. The batch after that runs to one million. We think by end of January or February we should complete that. This is a, this is not, we will, will, will go beyond limit of what is known and what it is. And our promotion and I was told advertising organization has been set up and already are working for this to be put out in heavy way in, in, uh, in China and around the world. You will see this, um, we'll give the name of the company when it's done and then you know exactly. But Cash Foundation has become part of the, what do you call it, production and marketing they do, we just give the technology. And hopefully after that, very soon you'll have the portable energy units. They're working on it, we we'll support here, we we'll see what happens. And as of next week, I think, the week after, yeah, Dr. Elias told me, so, um, we, this is something we have been using for 10, 15 years now. It's becoming part of the, what do you call it, production line of the Cash Foundation, medical section for pains of all sorts. I didn't want to market it, but Dr. Elias' idea was we have to do it, so now it's going into production. Uh, everything should be tied up. It's a, it's a special mat, silicon coated with a cloth cover that you can put anywhere which is a pain, and within hours, if it's correct, it should release the pain. Uh, it's the, usually at the moment, Dr. Elias tells me it's about what is it? What, what, what's the name of the belt for the pain? 140 euro. It's the body pack. Body pack, they call it. So we are hoping to market around about 20, 25 euro with the new technology, which brings a rich world that anybody can buy and keep. It's very much in a different form of what you call um, heat pads and cold pads. And as I said, uh, maybe, maybe we can get more information on that in the next workshop. We'll give you, we'll give you the the details as it comes from China. Uh, you all know who they are. You you've been in touch with them, most of some of you. But uh, it's become the manufacturing arm of the Cash Foundation. Yeah, they're definitely an active uh, bunch that are ready to go with this stuff. So it's great. Let's see what happens. We will, will most probably our target is if we, everything works out, the 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 star formation units as a unit as a kit should be out early next year too that people can do if they want to do a test they can do, and we add the knowledge all together around the world together with it. We got to see what happens. Let's let's get through the first batch, which is they tell me is a hundred thousand next next couple of weeks, and then we will see how the response is with the rest. Right on. Okay. Um, I guess that'll well, be the end of this workshop. Yeah, we'll speak in Chinese on Monday, and we speak in <laughs> Spanish on Tuesday. <laughs> Yes, and indeed. I have a childish language on my <laughs> Yeah, it's interesting, all right. We certainly have a full schedule we, here. We will report, or we don't report, we let you know what is the position with our negotiation with our colleagues who, one of them has arrived here and the rest to arrive in the coming days. Because it has to be played openly. They want to use the knowledge for peaceful application, we support them. In respect of it, they are connected and are part of the American military. And at the same time, the Iranian military will be on the table for negotiation that will be fair and correct. If you want to have an open workshop, let me know. As you know. Mm, yes, I don't, think, I don't think they would like that. Uh, what's uh, Brad is shaking his head? No, 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 no. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no. No, no. You can only we'll be see. so open about certain hopefully, things. Hopefully, hopefully it'll be a, it'll be as as good as when we started the peace talks with Iran two years ago with Americans. And now, if we can do, we will see what happens. And sooner or later, you will see the results and the fruit of the development. This 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 technology which we open to the Iranian military and the American military 
is a vital point of uh, use for peace applications of the technology. Uh, because this way we can enforce peace without a single shot being fired through using the new knowledge. It's unknown, it's well developed, but it's been kept as part of the secret part of the technology, and now we're releasing it equally to two nations. And that, that it is essential because two nations who've been so much against each other on the surface for the past 30 years, can overnight become friends on the same table to apply and bring the peace to world. And we see it, hopefully, my government uh, is ready to sit and talk, <coughs> if the American government is ready to sit and talk on the application of the technology. We wish you the very best in that. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Thank you indeed. Bye bye. Okay. Bye for now. And that's the end of the 13th Cash Health uh, Teaching Workshop. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, everybody, for attending. Hello.